Hi everyone. Today we are going to be looking at how we write our own multiplication story problems. Now this is a really important skill. If you're able to solve a story problem and recognize the need to multiply to get the answer, that shows a really good understanding of multiplication. If you are able to write your own story problem for someone else to solve using multiplication, that would show an excellent understanding of multiplication. And so this is a really important skill to be able to do. I'm going to show you the parts that we need to think about when we write our own story problem and do an example. So this week, oops, in on one of your worksheets, probably the one you're doing today if you're watching this video right now, um, yes, this one here, you skip counting to multiply. On the back of this page, this is page 159, on the back we have question number five right down here, which is asking you to make up a story problem. Make up a story problem for the multiplication sentence five groups of two equals ten. So I'm going to do one for a different equation so that you can see the steps that you need to think about. Okay. okay, so there are a few things we need to think about when we're making up a story problem for multiplication. The first thing is we need to remember that multiplication is equal groups. So whatever goes into my story problem is going to be about groups that have the same number of things in them. The next thing to think about is our group holders. So what I mean by that is what is going to be holding the objects? So this could be things like ice cream cones could be the holders of scoops. And so the cone would be your group and then the scoops of ice cream would be the objects in your group. It could be boxes of something or bags of something. The next thing we need to think about is the objects. What are going to be the things that are in my story problem? What's going to be in the boxes or in the bags or whatever my group holder is? And then the next last part is we need to end our story problem with a question. Okay, and that comes at the very end and we'll come back to that in a moment. Okay, so on your worksheet, I believe you're asked to write a story problem for five groups of two. So I'm going to choose a different multiplication equation. Let's do four groups of three. And I'm going to write a story problem that would use this equation to solve it. Now, this will not show up in my story problem. but whoever is solving it would need to use this equation to find the answer. Okay, so let me think about what could be, I think I'll use boxes. And what could go into boxes? How about little chocolates? I'm gonna be making up some little treats for my friends and I'll use boxes and chocolates. So if, this is how many groups I have. That means I'm going to need four boxes. And in each box, there's going to be three chocolates. I'm just going to do that for right now. Okay, and we're still going to ignore this question for a moment. So the first step is to figure out what is going to be your group holders, what is going to be your objects. Then we need to start writing the story problem. So I need to tell the reader what it's about. All right, so I am making treats for my friends.
I have four small boxes. I am putting three chocolates into each box. This word each is important when we're doing multiplication because it means that each of the boxes will have the same number in them to make the equal groups. Okay, so I've got my group holders, my four small boxes, and I have my objects, my three chocolates in each one. I need to end with a question. And we know that multiplication means finding the total of all the groups. So my question needs to be asking my reader to find the total in some way. Um, let me think. How many chocolates How many chocolates are there in total? I could say all together, anything like that. Okay. I am making treats for my friends. I have four small boxes. I am putting three chocolates into each box. How many chocolates are there in total? I'm just going to underline our sentence here too. I mean our question. This is a really important part of a story problem and it's one that's often forgotten. Now, I don't believe on the worksheet today that you're being asked to solve your own problem, but I think on the mid-chapter review on Friday, you're asked to write one and solve it. So I'm just going to show you how you go about solving this to make sure that we have all the parts as well. Okay, sometimes you'll just be asked to write one and, so, and show how you would solve it. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to, I wouldn't know this ahead of time if I was just looking at the story problem. So I would read it carefully and realize that, oh, I have four groups, four boxes with three chocolates. So I'm going to write the equation four groups of three equals. And if I wasn't sure, I could do some repeated addition to get the answer. I could skip count three, six, nine, 12. It's always a really good idea if the answer doesn't come to you right in your head to show how you figure it out. A lot of people will do this and then they'll erase it and just put the answer. But as your teacher, I really like to see, oh, what strategy did you use? Did you use skip counting? Did you draw a picture? Did you uh, use repeated addition? Okay, so don't erase any work that you do. So the skip counting told me that one, two, three, four, yep, yeah, I end up on 12. So that means that there is 12 chocolates in total. Now this is the part that people forget. I always ask you to write, a, put your answer in a sentence. And what some people do is they start writing in sentences how they figured out the answer. So for example, some people might start, well, I knew there was four boxes and three chocolates in each one, and so I skip counted by threes. That's not what I want you to write. When you're asked to write your answer in a sentence, or write a sentence answer, it's a sentence that answers this question. How many chocolates are there in total? There are 12 chocolates in total, or all together. 
And this is math, but we still don't want any bare naked sentences, so please make sure we've got a capital and a period. Okay, this is a sentence that answers the question. And those are the steps that you use to write your own math story problem. Most importantly, you need to figure out what are your group holders and what are the objects that are going to be in your groups. And once you have that, then you can make your story problem and put your question about the total at the end of your story problem. So I hope this helps and I look forward to reading some of the story problems that you guys write.